Hey guys, Sherry here from Netflix Giving Crew. How's it going? So I think I'm going to try something a little differently today. I've never done this before where I've actually done a reading on camera. And uh, so I've got two cameras happening here. Hi. Hi. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Um, so this is going to be a Twin Flame reading for uh, November the 20th until the 28th. So I hope you're all doing well. This is so weird. <laughs> okay. So I'm using the John Holland Psychic Tarot for the main cards. So let me just pull those. Um, so I'll use these for the feminine side. Okay, and and the John Holland Psychic Tarot of the Heart for the masculine side. Too many slots now. I went a little crazy with the hot glue gun. Uh, let's move these down here. All right. And let's see. Um, I think the fairy by Lenormand for the union energy. So I'd probably end up just seeing like half my head most of the time, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out a different arrangement here. Or I may not do this again. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I don't want to be concentrating on the camera when I'm trying to do the readings. Okay, here we go. So the union. All right. Let me just mute that. Okay, so I'll also give my cards a quick shuffle. All right, so beginning with the feminine side. So for her past, she got awareness. So this is a uh, master manifester. <laughs> this is so weird. Which camera do I talk to, that one or that one? Okay. So, the magician. Um, so, this means that, you know, it's a number one. It comes right after the Fool card, which is taking a leap of faith, starting a new life, a new beginning, um, having no expectations, no attachments. Number one, the magician, is realizing that you can manifest a new reality, and it's discovering your tools, your talents, your powers, uh, and honing those skills and focusing your attention um, on, you know, on your ultimate goal and having those dreams manifested into reality. So it is a, um, a major arcana, so it's a heavy energy. So let's pull the confirmation cards. So the Seven Pentacles, the Nine, and the Queen of Cups. So the Seven of Pentacles in the past position, this is waiting, okay? So it's contemplation. You're waiting for uh, the ships to return. You're waiting for harvest. You're waiting for a payoff. So the feminine is always represented as waiting. So it's waiting for something to manifest into the 3D reality. And so there's a sense that there was a lot of work and effort put forth in manifesting a dream um, and, you know, you've really utilized your talents, your strength. This is crown chakra activation. So it's a direct connection to source. So the present position is payoff. So nine of uh, pentacles is harvest, ripeness, readiness. Um, and it's also a self-love card. So it's looking after yourself in the 3D reality. Sorry if I'm not looking at the camera. I'm definitely trying to 
look over once in a while, but it's kind of distracting at the same time, so my apologies. All right, so the future position is the Queen of Cups. So this could represent a water sign, but it is the Divine Feminine who is really in touch with her emotions. Um, she's giving love unconditionally, receiving it unconditionally. So this could be the um, future of the past or the future of the future. So maybe uh, what is still to come. So there is a definite groundedness here, feeling of success and growth. Um, and, you know, these powers, if you want to call it that, are coming alive in the feminine. And she's moving into her heart space, or has moved into her heart space. Okay, so what is in the masculine's past position? Wow, throat chakra. So either the masculine has been communicating, um, or he desires very strongly to communicate. Uh, so let's see what the confirmation cards are. So Eight of Swords. Wow, there's that full card I was talking about. And the Nine of Swords. Okay, so the past position, Eight of Swords is the self-imposed prison of the mind. So it is being consumed with thoughts that you believe in. So uh, the masculine felt that he was being held back, um, kept pr imprisoned, right? So these are just thoughts or oppressive energies coming from the outside. So somebody is making him feel like this, but um, there's a sense that he's really struggling with the mind. He wants he wants to communicate or wanted to communicate, but he couldn't. And it progressed into the nine or will progress into the nine in the future. But <clears throat> at the present position, we have the full card. And that's what I was talking about. It's taking a leap of faith. It is starting from zero. So this is having um, a childlike perspective. And no attachments, no expectations, just moving forward uh, and starting this new life, okay? So there's a sense that he has taken a, a, a leap of faith. He's released himself from that mental prison, but then it comes back to him in the future with the Nine of Swords, right? This is worry, guilt, fear, anxiety, major stress. Uh, so it's like he's going around in like a, a cycle, um, self-perpetuating cycle of feeling imprisoned, feeling free, and then back to feeling imprisoned again. Okay, so what is in the feminine's present position? Crown chakra, wow. So, again, major illumination happening here. So the page of swords, uh, the magician again, and the tower. Okay, so the Page of Swords in the past position, um, this is a very important communication card. So we got a nice synchronicity between the Throat Chakra uh, and the Page of Swords. Um, this could also represent um, an air sign. But what I'm feeling here is that, you know, the truth was spoken. There was open, honest communication between her and most li likely the masculine. But there is a sense that there's an emotional detachment uh, with the air, with the swords. So, yeah, okay, so in the present position we have that magician, so it's the same card here. So, in the present moment, the feminine is again in this state of manifestation. This could also mean that she's had a lot of ideas kind of circulating in her mind, inventions, um, thoughts, uh, plans, that kind of thing. And she's taking those ideas and manifesting into the, to the 3D reality. So double crown chakra in the present moment. And the page of swords is actually um, mind as well. So there's mental clarity on an ultimate scale here. So the future position is the tower card. So the, like the house of cards, um, a very simple gust of wind comes in and can knock it down. So this means a sudden change 
um, an aha moment, um, sudden clarity, or like a disruption. So, you know, in the future, there's a sense that something's going to come in very suddenly. Um, and it's going to change the feminine's life forever. And it has to do with, it, it's like she's brought it on herself. She has created this vibration, this energy in the field of, of potential. And it, you know, it comes in and changes her reality very quickly by the look of it. So she manifests what she's desired, always wanted. Okay, so the masculine's present position is a star card. Nice. Um, so this is wish granted. Um, so this card comes after a very difficult period of time. It's very nice to see that there's, you know, some healing that's happening with the masculine. Um, so it offers hope for the future. And you can see here the chains are coming off. And here we have him in that mental prison. So he's breaking free, but healing at the same time. Eight of Wands, Ten of Swords, wow, and the Six of Wands, very nice. So we got uh, two Wands here with a Ten of Swords in the center, which is beautiful because we see that progression from the Eight to the Nine to the Ten. So those chains are definitely coming off. This is complete closure and ending to feeling this way. But in the past position, we have the Eight of Wands. So again, communication happened in the past. That's three times that we've had the communication card. So the most important communication card is the Throat Chakra. Uh, number two is the Eight of Wands. Number three is the Page of Swords. And then uh, the Ace of Swords is the fourth one. So this could mean, again, that very important communication took place, either texting or phone call. Um, and I seem to recall something about this in the last week's reading where the masculine really needed to speak his truth. It was important. So it seems to me that for some, this communication took place. Although it's now it is important for the feminine side here. You know, we got the one card, whereas over here we have the throat chakra in the main card position. So there's definite heavy energies. So this could also mean that he has raised his vibration and um, he's more on a spiritual path. And so things are starting to manifest into his reality. So the future position is the Six of Wands. So this is success, victory, people cheering him on. He's a rock star. So he's going to feel a great deal of success, of course. You know, he has come out of very, a very dark um, period. All right, so the feminine's near future is the Four of Cups, disconnecting boredom. So this energy immediately caught my attention uh, because it's, it's facing away from the union. And it's also concentrating on the darkness instead of the light. You can see here the, there's rainbows trying to touch this person's feet, and they're not noticing. So this card also could mean um, a missed opportunity as well. So in the near future, either the feminine is going to be turning away from this connection, feeling like things are stagnant, uh, becoming a little um, disconnected, basically, or vice versa. It could be the masculine. Oh, wow. Heart chakra. The star card again. And the king of pentacles. So the heart chakra. So we can see that in the past here, there was the heart chakra activation for sure with the, the uh, Queen of Cups. So cool synchronicity. Are you able to see those cards? Move it over a bit. Okay. Um, the present posi position is the star card. So that's the same card that's over here. So there's mirroring happening. Um, so the star card is healing energy. It also is wish granted and it's hope. So I guess with that tower, right, there's going to be some healing required. However, the feminine, you know, is in her heart space, even though there's this disconnect and um, loneliness, um, you know, longing energy here. 
um, she's still holding love in her heart and she's healing herself. So definite vibration here on both sides of loving, healing energy, looking after yourself, self-love. So I can see very strongly that the feminine, instead of giving her all of her love unconditionally to the masculine, she's giving it unconditionally to herself, if that makes sense. Um, so in the future position is the King of Pentacles. So this could represent an earth sign. Cool synchronicity that we have in the future positions are the Queen and the King. So there may be a connection. Um, the King of Pentacles is one who um, is someone you can hold and feel and caress and hug, right, in a 3D reality. So there could be manifestation of the ma a masculine energy in her future. Or it could just be somebody who is um, very grounded and um, successful. This could be like a father figure. So, yeah, it's like her wishes come true, right, with a star card. She's felt a deep love in the past, and it's like it comes towards her, manifests towards her as this king of pentacles. Okay, so the masculine's near future is uh, justice. So this says detach. So it's a number 11. So the masculine is detaching from something. Um, he's, what I feel is finally letting that dove free, right? With the ten of swords, the healing card, all that. So he's letting go of, I don't know. You know, because it's not the feminine. He's not letting go of the feminine because he's facing towards the feminine here. So, yeah. Um, well, let's pull the clarifiers. So the Justice card, wow, there's that throat chakra again. So the Justice card, wow, there's the eight of, Ace of Swords and the Four of Pentacles. Okay, so the Justice card is karma coming back to you. So it's um, the law of cause and effect. Right, so that's why you see this dove being released. It's like what you put out into the universe, you get back. So usually, when this card shows up, it means that justice will prevail. So the throat chakra, past position, cool synchronous synchronicity. Okay, so this is all about communication for the masculine right now. Very important. He's bringing this energy into the near future. So he released or detached in the past in order to heal himself. And the vibration that he put out was very positive because we got the star card, we got the eight of wands, we got the six of wands. That's all manifestation and success. All right, so there's a sense that um, either he communicates you know, that's what I'm seeing very strongly here, and it's a very um, truthful, honest communication, right? We see a woman here who is naked. Uh, she's, she has nothing to hide. She's vulnerable. She's exposed. Um, and so this is all about justice and truth, and so is this card. So they're both like, there's this beautiful release um, and communication. Right, it's like he either makes a decision um, to speak his truth, or uh, he makes a decision about something. This is also a successful card. So the future position is the Four of Pentacles. So this is obviously somebody being closed off, holding on too tightly to something, um, not letting something go, and that all has to do with the 3D reality. So I'm actually going to pull one more card for that. Why won't you go in there? Okay, sorry. So I have a little deck here. I'm actually going to reverse some of them because before I come on camera, I, I always uh, make sure all the cards are upright and then I reverse, you know, two or three of them. But here they were all upright. I forgot to reverse them, so my bad. Let me just flip a couple more. Okay, so Spirit, what do you mean by... Um, wow, I'm already at 20 minutes. <laughs> Holy shit. 
Um, okay, so what do you mean by the Four of Pentacles, Spirit, please? Disgusted by it or with self. Wow. Wow, okay. So he discovers a truth about himself, right? We have this energy of truth, exposure, vulnerability, honesty, openness. And then in the future, there's a sense of being closed off. And he's then disgusted by himself for doing that, right? And it's like he sees how he keeps setting himself up for... Um, it's almost like failure. It's like he wants to communicate or he does or doesn't. I don't know. It's just there's no direction here whatsoever, especially with the Four of Pentacles in the future. It's like he becomes closed off again, right? Okay, so what is the final outcome for the feminine? Wow, Four of Wands. Yay! So the Four of Wands is confirmation of a twin flame connection. Um, so this is, again, achievement, foundation and achievement. So it is um, manifesting the twin flame connection into the 3D reality. But you guys are actually um, l fulfilling your higher calling, if that makes any sense. Like you've come together um, and you are together raising the vibration of the, the world. Uh, so there's this conscious uh, union manifested into the 3D reality. So that's going to be her final outcome. Wow, okay. Very, you know, it's almost like she's being tested in the near future, right? With the Four of Cups, she turns away from the connection in order to focus on her healing. And then there's this manifestation in the future, right? And it comes in very suddenly. So the Five of Wands, the High Priestess, and the King of Wands, all in the future, all the court cards are showing up in the future for the feminine side. Interesting. Okay, so the Five of Wands past position is overcoming obstacles, challenges, differencing of opinion. So it's um, competition, right? You're trying to make a way to make your light shine brighter, You're trying to be noticed by the mask. And somehow you felt that you didn't compete on some level. So you've overcome challenges. The High Priestess is a goddess, somebody who is very connected to her intuition, her, she has psychic ability. She is able to tap into the subconscious mind um, and see her truth within herself. So there's a sense that she, she feels accomplished for overcoming these challenges, but I'm not even entirely sure why that Five of Wands is there. I might actually pull a clarifier, but like there's such different levels between the five of wands and the high priestess. The high priestess is way beyond that, right? She's a goddess. She's ruled by the moon. She's, um, you know, third eye chakra activation. Whereas here, a third eye chakra activation wouldn't be um, totally uh, in the forefront uh, because you you don't have confidence with the five of wands. You feel challenged. You don't you don't feel bright enough. Whereas the high priestess is beyond that, right? It's she's there's nothing out there that she's she needs or desires. Um, so this four of wands is manifested into her reality, uh, and there's this deep knowing and understanding that this um, is true, is true love, perhaps. So the King of Wands future position. So this could represent fire sign, but this is the masculine being represented as somebody who's very powerful. We got wand action all the way around the feminine or the high priestess here. So wand is is spirituality. So the King of Wands is somebody who is a leader, somebody who's you know. Um, very charismatic, the center of attention, in the spotlight, desires being in the spotlight. So 
there's this definite empowerment. So this could even be the masculine not feeling confident about himself and the feminine just kind of holding space, right? You know, sending this vibration of the four of wands out into the universe. And as a result, it attracts the masculine energy to her in that wand energy, very powerful now, right? Oh, he's, he's discovered his truth, his power, that fire, that passion within himself. And so beautiful synchronicity of the four of wands with the king of wands uh, and the high priestess. There's this spiritual manifestation into the 3D reality. Okay, so the final outcome for the masculine is the two of swords, refusing to see. Okay, so right, the he has the ace of swords in the present position for the near future, so it's like he sees, but then closes off, refuses to see, right? He puts his metal helmet back on. Um, but it's neat how the third eye chakra is still kind of activated there. So the six of pentacles, the hermit, and the solar plexus chakra. So the Six of Pentacles past position is reciprocation. It is a cohabitation card. So it's sharing your energy, your vibration, um, your life with somebody in the 3D. So it's an even exchange of energy between you and another person. So there is this openness and reciprocation in the past, but suddenly it's like he closes himself off. The hermit is somebody who completely detaches from the 3D reality, um, goes on a spiritual journey, gains wisdom and knowledge, but this person has been on this journey for some time because he's being represented as a hermit. He's, he enjoys solitude. So as a minor energy in the present, he has the hermit. So this detachment from the 3D um, reality, which is the Six of Pentacles, is illuminating him. It is opening up that, that helmet. It is helping him make a decision. Um, so in the future position we have the solar plexus chakra. So this is uh, strength, power, it's number three chakra, so it's a lower vibration. So again, the hermit wouldn't be concerned about the solar plexus chakra. There's nothing out there that he needs or desires. So there's this weird dichotomy between the mind and spirit and the 3D here. So what do you mean by the solar plexus chakra, please, spirit? It is reality. Reality. It is reality. Huh. Okay, well, that doesn't help. So let me pull one card from the Osho Zen. Spirit, what do you mean by this cluster of cards? He's refusing to see something. Right? It's like he's recycling himself back into this prison over and over and over again. He wants to open up, communicate, um, gets to a point of feeling successful, and then he goes right back into this closed off state again. Okay, stop. Completion. Okay, so that's the end of the fool's journey. So it's the last major arcana. Um, so it's a final piece of the puzzle being placed. So let me just read that to you real quick. Okay, so um, here the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle is being put into its place. The position of the third eye third eye, okay, so repeated theme there, um, the place of perception. Even in the ever-changing flow of life, there are moments in which we come to a point of completion. 
In these moments, we are able to perceive the whole picture, the composite of all the small pieces that have occupied our attention for so long. In the finishing, we can either be in despair because we don't want the situation to come to an end, or we can be grateful and accepting of the fact that life is full of endings and new beginnings. Whatever has been absorbing your time and energy is now coming to an end. So in completing it, you will be clearing the space for something new to begin. Use this interval to celebrate both the end of the old and the coming of the new. So the end of the fool's journey, here we have the beginning, the fool card here in the past present position. Um, and then here we have the end or completion of that. This is also um, the completion of a cycle from 20 years up to a lifetime. So major accomplishments. So there is, he's about to complete something, but there's this overwhelming fear um, that is holding him back, right? It, it requires strength, but ultimately, you know, he does complete that cycle. Over here on the feminine side, we see that completion. Okay, well, let's see what the union energies are like. So what does the feminine bring in is, nice, the Three of Cups. So this is celebration. It is union. Um, so this is two people coming together to form a third energy, which is love, and celebrating that love. So it, it bubbles up within. You can see those, you know, bubbles there <laughs> in the background. So she's bringing in... A celebration of this love into the union. Wow, very nice, nice. Okay, so the divine feminine, the empress, beautiful. So the feminine has really stepped into her divine beauty, groundedness, um, mother kind of nurturing energy. Um, again, this is self-love card. It is manifestation. Um, and she is the goddess of love as well. So beautiful. There's this transition of heart space happening in the past. And it's being brought into every action that she takes. So the third eye shock, this is what she's bringing into the union. Okay, this already occurred in the past, and it's grounded this connection, and she's just celebrating it. So the third eye chakra is, again, you know, the high priestess has that chakra activated. So in terms of this connection, she looks inside and sees within herself that this connection is, is true love. She feels it bubbling within herself. Um, she knows it to be true because it draws out this divine feminine within her. Um, and, yeah, so um, there's a mirroring here, uh, a repeated theme over and over and over again. You know, uh, the Queen of Cups is also highly intuitive. So third eye chakra, either the third eye, well, let's look at this. Okay, so we got the heart chakra with the crown. Uh, the crown chakra, crown chakra, crown chakra, uh, heart chakra, um, with just healing energy, okay, groundedness, uh, and then spirituality and the third eye chakra. So, strong, strong theme with this activation, this illumination, enlightenment, and it's directly connected to the masculine and her heart space. While the masculine is like, I got to communicate. Oh my God, I can't. Um, and then he goes into this hiding or running phase uh, and just continues to recycle through it over and over again. So the future position is a strength card. Um, so this is using love, kindness, and compassion, very gentle, nurturing energy in order to transmute a negative environment into something that is very loving, very positive, very um, understanding. Okay, so she, in the future, is going to continue to be in this 
gentle space. And that's what you see repeated throughout, even though there's this disconnect in the near future. Um, you know, I just kind of see it as some lingering triggers or what have you. Um, it's like she's longing for that connection in the 3D reality, which she ultimately manifests, but there's always that lingering feeling of, well, you know, why doesn't he reach out? Why doesn't he, you know, express himself to, <laughs> you know, talk to me kind of thing. Um, tell me how you feel. Why are you so afraid? Uh, why do you, you know, why do you want to cut yourself off to something that is, you know, so beautiful and loving and whatever? Okay, so what is Mouse and bringing in the Three of Wands? So take the lead. So you can see here that he's reaching out, reaching for the sun. Um, this is partnerships as well. So it is an expansion and a willingness to reach out, you know, and to take the lead, right? Find that power in order to take that lead. So again, repeated theme here of, you know, strength, um, feeling lacking in confidence, ultimately finding that confidence, um, lacking in confidence here, you know, strength, uh, so the feminine is mirroring a very gentle energy, whereas the masculine is really struggling with, uh, you know, making decisions, detaching, and communicating. All right, so the confirmation cards. Wow, the Three of Wands again. Base Chakra. And the Universe card. Wow, crazy synchronicities. Sorry again, guys, if I'm not paying attention to the camera. Um, okay, so the Three of Wands past position is the exact same card, so, you know, thumbs up from the universe, you're on the right track, keep going, take the lead. So there's this um, reaching out energy coming in from the past, and that's what he's bringing into the union. So a desire to reach out, repeated theme. Okay, so the base chakra in its present moment is the lowest uh, chakra, so number one, so this is safety and security, sustenance, right? If it's grounding energy, and, and because it's activated, he's lacking in that. So he doesn't feel safe. He doesn't feel um, that he can take the, the lead. He doesn't feel um, he doesn't feel healthy enough, maybe. I don't know, but he's still being controlled by the mind. So the future position is the um, world card, universe card, same one up here. So cool synchronicity that um, as a final outcome, we're going to have that completion, right, with the, uh, the world card here, or universe. So again, this major accomplishment, end of a cycle from 20 years up to a lifetime. So he's moving towards that, but he's re really struggling with confidence and a feeling of safety, right? He's, um, yeah, it's like the 3D reality as well as the mind is really playing games with him. So let's move into the union energy. So as the foundation we have, wow, wisdom. So this is a purity card. This is Purity, purity that comes from wisdom. So you can see there's an older man here. Um, I think this came up in last week's reading. I'm not too sure. So this is a shared energy between the masculine and feminine. So there's this divine wisdom and um, innocence as a foundation. This is what they've built together so far. So I'm going to pull two cards, one for the feminine first. Crown Chakra, wow. And the Page of Wands, very cool. So the Crown Chakra activation, we can see it over here. Wisdom. Um, the Crown Chakra is a direct connection to Source. Uh, this is where you can download ideas, inspiration from the Akashic Records. 
uh, and again manifest right with the magician into the re into the 3D reality. So the feminine has been wow, just like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Like I, I see her as this wise spirit who is completely aware and conscious. Um, even though she, her heartstrings are being tugged at every once in a while, she's able to withdraw from that and heal from it. So the masculine is bringing in the page of wands. So this is uh, a page again is communication, right? So as a foundation, there's a sense that there's this great communication or great news that came in in the past. If not, the page of wands is very similar to the magician, or sorry, the uh, fool card in that um, he's beginning a new adventure. He's starting a new life uh, that has to do with spirituality. So, um, you know, this is being excited. Uh, about this new prospect, this new life, this new idea. And it's also epiphany, realizations, right? Aha moments. So there is definite spiritual growth that has occurred, no doubt about it, as a foundation. And that's exactly what Twin Flame connections are all about. Like I, I always say, it's not about union. Uh, it is about soul growth. So what is a found or sorry, what is a crowning energy? Wow. Interesting. I'm pretty sure that we got this in the last week's reading. It's so this is um loyalty. Like this is there's a, a dog here with a little fairy. And so there's, you know, this sense of loyalty, friendship, um, you know, a very dear friend who that someone that you can uh, confide in, trust. Um, there's longevity about this card as well. So as a crowning energy, there's this deep friendship, this deep bond uh, between the two. So, wow, the Five of Cups for the Feminine and Six of Cups for the Masculine. Sorry if you guys can see fruit flies flying around every once in a while. It's, uh, it's fall here on the West Coast. So this is a time when all the fruits, all the oranges and apples they they drop to the, the ground and you know they, they start to decay and so it attracts the fruit flies as well as the the bears so that's lots of fun um, so the five of cups is what the feminine is bringing in so she's bringing in this heartbreak okay so five of cups with the four of cups three of cups so in terms of this union there is um, a celebration of love, but yet under the surface there's still this feeling of heartbreak. Um, she wants her friend back. You know, this is mourning the loss of something. She's mourning the loss of this connection, this, this friendship. And so the masculine is bringing in the Six of Cups. Wow! So this is reunion. He wants to reunite with his loyal friend, his, you know, soulmate. Um, so this is somebody from the past coming back, somebody from childhood or previous life, but we always see this as a reunion for the, the twin flames. So beautiful crowning energy. Well, you know, for the masculine anyway. Okay, so what is at the heart is the ten of swords, or not ten of swords, but... It's kind of like the, the Ten of Wands and the Ten of, of Swords together. So it represents an ending. Um, and it also represents harvest, right? So you've cut down um, your wheat or whatever it is, and so you've bundled it all up, and now you're going to uh, reap the rewards for it. So it's like um, harvest energy. It's a completion, feeling successful, but it also represents... Um, cutting away things uh, that no longer serve you, right? So it's cleaning things up. So at the heart, there's a 10 here, which is completion. Wow, the Ace of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles. Cool. So Pentacle is Earth, 3D reality. The Ace of Pentacles is um, a brand new beginning in the 3D. So that is clearly what the feminine is trying to manifest on her side. There's this desire to have a new start, 
right, with the magicians and the crown chakra activation. Ultimately, that is what she manifests as a final outcome, but there's this sense that she's offering um, a gift. She's offering that Ace of Pentacles to the masculine at the heart space. Um, you know, they're, they're clearing out the last little bit of details is what I see. You know, we got a 10 here, which re reduces to the 1, and then the Ace, which is also 1. So we have an 11, so it's new beginnings. Uh, so this is a windfall card, right? This is abundance, a gift from the universe. So the two pentacles, very interesting. We have the Ace, then the two. So similar vibrations, okay? So they're both cutting away something or ending something so that they can have this new beginning in the 3D. And so it's a, a mirroring of energy. So the Two Pentacles is having that seed planted, taking root, and as it you know, grows and comes into the 3D reality, it starts to change um, the physical world. And so you feel unsteady, you feel pulled in different directions, all right? So this is, you know, a card of resilience, bending with the, the wind. So at the heart, there is a seed planted and a growth happening. Um, but for the masculine, there's this imbalance. He's trying to find balance, while the feminine is kind of just in this state of offering. So what is the overall energy? It is, wow, okay. So, again, it kind of repeats this Ten of Swords here. Um, I don't know why I want to call that the Ten of Swords, sorry. The Ten of Bale of Hay, or I don't know. <laughs> so, you can see this lower, or this ending with the Bay Chakra, the Ten of Swords, um, you know, the... the uh, star card, right? There's something that the masculine's coming out of. And you can also see that with the universe cards in the future positions. So there's this, he's coming out of this dark state, healing himself, completing a cycle, but it is wearing on him mentally and, uh, you know, his strength is wavering. So this card is all about transition. It's moving from one state to another. So here we have like a, a coffin or whatever, but then we have two fairies and there's this vibration of recycling here, rebirth. So as an overall energy, there's this death and rebirth, but it is a transition energy. Okay, so um, we can see the death happening more on the masculine side, those completions. The feminine is more in this birthing, growthing, growthing, <laughs> growth kind of energy. So, yeah, makes perfect, total sense. All right, so I'm going to pull two cards from Myths and Mermaids. So I'll read those to you as a final message from the universe. Yeah, I don't know, it's kind of distracted a bit. I think I could have did a, a little bit better reading if I wasn't on camera. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, leave a comment. I, I read all the comments. And again, thank you for your love, your support, your donations. Oh my God. I love you guys. Okay, stop. So the feminine is Hamadryad Lake and the masculine is Mermaid with Butterflies. Interesting. Wow. Okay, so um, the lake she looks alluring, home to fairy folk and frog. Yet beneath the placid glass lies an enchantress in the bog. She drinks her fill of innocence and sups upon your soul, withering your sense of self until her bowels are full. A vulnerable nymph rests herself beside a mystical lake. It is a beautiful, magical place, and she finds herself drawn into a false sense of security, not knowing of the deception waiting for her below the surface. So the meaning, beware deception and enchantment. 
A female with bad designs will seek to lead you astray when you're at your most vulnerable. She may be enchanting, but do not allow her to lure you down the improper path. Though you might may feel defenseless, know as long as you stay true to yourself, you will not be led astray. Keep your wits about you. The nephrous female in question may not be a stranger. She may be someone you already know whose goals are at odds with your own. What, sorry, whether she is a trusted colleague, a long-time acquaintance, or a dazzling new friend, do not be deceived by the glamour of what she proposes. If a situation sounds too good to be true, trust your gut instinct. It is a deception. Okay. So... I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really see that vibration here in the reading, except for, you know, the five of cups and the four. So, I think it's just a, a reminder to use your intuition. Go within when you feel tested, when you feel like, you know, somebody's deceiving you. Yeah, just find your center. Ask yourself, if, if is, it, is it true? Uh, and if it feels true, then it's true. Okay, so the mouse guns bring in number 30. Okay, so mermaid with butterflies. Sagacious butterfly, rising above her tainted pond, how does she ascend to find peace and purity beyond? A lovely young mermaid gazes longingly at the beautiful multicolored butterflies ascending above her um, out of a rippling pond. Her heart longs to go with them and escape the mire in which she finds herself. So the meaning is rise above your circumstances. It is time to rise above your circumstances. You have been content with lesser and corrupted things for too long. Look inside your inner self and realize that you're not happy with aspects of your situation. Deep down you realize that you're better than your circumstances. Perhaps your circle of friends is pulling you down or in a bad direction. Perhaps your work is beneath your skills, abilities, and aspirations. But you are having trouble breaking free. So breaking free with that eight of swords, nine of swords, right? Detachment, um, the chains coming off. So it could be your home life, your significant other, your neighborhood, or your domicile self. That is not up to your standards. However, just like the butterfly mermaid, you have seen a path to peace and purity. Shake off the corrupt acquaintances and the duties that are beneath you. Aspire for more. Spirituality, emo or sorry, spiritually, emotionally, and intellectually. Take inspiration from the noble butterfly. Take wing and rise above. Aww beautiful take wing and rise above repeated kind of energy so he's coming out of this darkened state basically and so he's releasing his fears uh, again cutting away things that no longer serve him so the feminine um, continue to hear heal your heart space and so there we have it uh, let me know what you guys think and um, sending you guys much love and peace. All right, cheers.